Welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey. Today's tutorial we're going to work on the paw stockings and this could be either for cats or dogs. There is a cat or dog version and the paws are exactly the same thing. The only difference is is that the cats has a fish and the dogs have a bone. Today's video we're going to be focusing on the dog and basically we're going to make the, uh, the paws. I'm going to be teaching this one from a different point of view where I'm going to show you how to cheat the system especially down here. This pattern works in rows going all the way down and then circling around the bottom and then coming back up and we keep going back and forth. Today's tutorial I have done a little bit of homework for you so that you can simplify the whole learning process and make this so much easier. So without further ado let me review that next. So to begin I've made a paw stocking counting saver diagram. So the way I did it is that I tried this pattern about a year ago and I was not successful because I was getting too distracted on the amount of counting that I had to do when I was coming all the way down to the bottom. And in actual fact the bottom of my paw was way off to one side because I was not counting properly. You know people distract you etc. What I realized is that I made a diagram and I followed the diagram as I was absolutely paying attention uh, last night as I was working on it. And basically I have marked the points of where it's increasing. And what I have is a blue line that is following it here to show me where I'm going to be moving the stitch marker as I move up. The stitch marker is going to represent in the next row where the increase will follow. For example we have row number three will come up. The increase here will be on the second one here. So when I get to that spot in the tutorial I'm going to tell you to put the stitch marker here and not here. And so basically when you come back all the way around on number four you're going to already have that marked and you're going to know exactly where all the stitches are going to go. So the key is to start off right with the number of stitches but then once you get to the bottom level here you can actually follow it. Even better, Even better I put this chart on the website so you can actually print it and follow it along just like I have. Now the blue marks I just did for myself in tutorial format so I can actually show you but this is what I'm going to be following as I'm telling you to move up the stitch markers. So for today's tutorial you're going to need a size H 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need some stitch markers. Just grab some leftover yarn and just do a length about yay so and we're going to be moving those up so that we know where we are. Today we're going to be using Super Saver. The first one that I did is actually done with Red Heart with Love. You can decide on which one that you like the most. So let's begin with the slip knot. And remember that does not ever count as one and insert it your hook in and let's begin. So let's begin we're going to start off with chaining of 34. Remember that this does not count as one. So we have one, two, three, four and five. Please go all the way to number 34 and when we come back we'll start the next process. So we're down at the bottom just like so. We have the 34 in and now we want to single crochet across this. So to begin what I strongly recommend is that you have your chain just like so. You have to go second from the hook. So you got one and two. Don't go into the front. Turn it over and get that back hump of the stitch to begin. And you're going to single crochet yourself all the way across this line. But at the very last stitch what we're going to do is that we're going to make sure that we have enough uh, to be able to go around. So right now we're going to be going down this line and then we're going to be coming back up this line on the other side on this side of your chain. So I want you to make sure you get in that back hump as you go down because the stitch working is going to look a lot better when you come back up the other side. So please crochet all the way down to the end of the line and leave the last one empty and waiting for me to tell you what's next. So we've come all the way down but we've left the last stitch empty, the last, ch last chain. So what I need you to do before you continue at this point is that I need you to make sure that there are 32 completed single crochets so far and I've already counted off camera. I know that that's accurate. You need to make sure that before you get that last one if you're off by any restart again. You need to start this project off properly. So if you've already counted and you're ready to go again let's continue and we're going to then complete the last one and then turn this over and work down the other side as for row number one. So let's complete row number one. They're going to go into the last stitch here and you're going to put in three single crochets. So one, two and three. But I want you to stop. I want you to pull this loop up like this and I want you to get those stitch markers that I talked about and I want you to put it into the very first one of the three. 
Okay, so we were gonna put it right there. So let's get that first one and we're just gonna put one through there to represent where the next stitches are gonna start and stop and then the next one is gonna go right underneath where the loop is coming out of and that represents the third one. Okay, so now you have your stitch markers labeling which one is which. So in the diagram you would have a number one you'll have three single crochets coming out of the same spot. So I'm representing then the first and the last one of that. So let's uh, continue. We're gonna move down now and we're gonna continue to come all the way around and we're just gonna just start turn it over and just start single crocheting all the way back to the beginning. So we just turned around and now I'm working on it. You look like it's perfect. That's because we worked on the back hump the first time. So this looks like a perfect normal uh, single crochet stitch at this point which it is uh, but it's just the way that we started off is different. So please go back all the way to the beginning and then we're gonna start on row number two. I'm coming up to the end of row number one. I'm still on the opposite side and you really can't even tell at this point because of the way that we started and we just come to our very last one and we single crochet and stop. So let's turn our work. We're gonna now complete row number two. So this is what it looks like at this point. We're gonna be coming down this side and then rotating around the end again and coming back. So we already have our stitch markers labeled and those are where we're gonna do the increase for this next row. So let's begin. We're just going to simply chain up one and then single crochet all ourselves all the way down until we get to the stitch marker. You can either count it out as per the pattern but if you've got that stitch marker in place you won't need to count. You can just start right away and get started. So I'll meet you at the first stitch marker as we go all the way down. So I'm coming all the way down and I'm about to run into the first stitch marker and when we run into the first stitch marker here's where we're gonna start rotating around. So between those, this stitch marker and the next one each one of the three are gonna get two uh, single crochets in each. Now here's the thing. Watch this. The first one is going to get one single crochet and then another one. But wait. I put two in there. I want you to move that stitch marker to the second one right underneath this loop and that represents where the next row is going to start doing the increase. Okay, so that was the first one of three. Okay, we're gonna come around and we're gonna do the next one. The next one is gonna get two single crochets. We're not gonna do anything with stitch markers for that. Okay, and then we're going to do this final one. You can see the stitch markers in. Okay, and we're gonna put two there. And now I want you to move that stitch marker into the second one. So not the first one underneath, it's the second one over. So if you looked at the diagram you'll notice that it's increasing on the second part of the where it's uh, decrease are increasing. So now that you have that done you have your stitch markers moved up you're simply just going to single crochet down the remainder of the line and when we get back we'll turn around again and start on row number three. Coming up to the conclusion of row number two I'm back at the very top of the stocking again getting into my last stitch and then I'm gonna turn and begin round, uh, row number three. So let's turn to start row number three. We are going to chain up one and then single crochet all the way back down to the first stitch marker that you've already listed. So again you could have counted these out instead of moving your stitch markers but you can see that you don't have to worry about counting if you're actually worrying about where the stitch markers are gonna follow. So let me uh, get you all the way down there. I'll meet you there in just a few moments and I'll see you there. So now coming up to where the stitch markers are. You can see it's right in that stitch. I have one more to go before I get there and we are going to doing something different again. So let's just get this last one in and here is the stitch marker. So I know this is where the increase is going to start. We're going to do an increase on this stitch marker and in this stitch marker but everything in between we are going to be only one single crochet for this particular row. So let's uh, begin the first one. We are going to start off with putting two single crochets into that one but wait a minute before you move on I want you to move the stitch marker to the second one. So just make sure it's the one right underneath the loop on this side and move that stitch marker up so you're ready for the next row. And so the next two that you have are gonna be one single crochet each for this row. And now we're back onto the other one here and that one's gonna get two single crochets. So let's do that and move the stitch marker to the second one over. So it's not the one under the loop on this side, it's the one here. 
Okay, so you can see the reason why basically where it is on the loop here is just because of the way that it's turning the angle that you have to make sure you keep it in balance. So let's uh, begin. We're just gonna continue to go down this whole section now with just one single crochet into each and when we get to the end we'll turn around and we'll start on row number four. Okay, let's complete row number three. We're just coming all the way back to the end and we just finished off. This is the top of the stocking again. Let's turn around. So we're just gonna chain up one and one single crochet in each and we're gonna hit you back at the stitch marker in just a moment and that'll, this is row number four. So you can see this is what it looks like at this point. So we're coming up around the edge on the bottom of the stocking and we're almost at the stitch marker. Okay, so here's what's gonna change on this one. The stitch marker for the next part is gonna end up in a really weird position. You just have to trust me because it does work. So what we want to do is the first one with the stitch marker is gonna have two single crochets. Okay, that's a given. The next one is also going to have two single crochets. But here's the thing. I want you to move the stitch marker then to the one that's right underneath the final one of the two. Okay, so I put in two and now I'm gonna move this side of the stitch marker in and now I want to do the next one. So the next one is two single crochets as well. So then I want you to move the stitch marker then to the second one over. So not the one right underneath the loop, the second one. So both of the stitch markers are going to be side by side right at the top just like here. And so now we have just one last, last one, left, <laughs> one la <laughs> last one here, two single crochets to complete round number four here and then we're just gonna blaze on down to the beginning again. So you can see we had four uh, increases right in a row but it's just a matter in the next one here we have hardly any increasing going on except for right where these two stitch markers are ready for the next one. So I'll meet you down at the end. We'll turn around and we'll start on row number five. Okay, let's complete off row number four just coming to the very end turning our work and let's start again. So we're gonna chain one and one single crochet and let's uh, continue to single crochet all the way until we hit that first stitch marker right at the bottom of the stocking. So row number four we're waiting to get all the way to the stitch marker pretty well at the end of the bottom. So you can see that this uh, material is just taking time to flex around. So if you force the bend too, e uh, too quickly then it doesn't work out to be proper. So we're now on the stitch marker and let's put in two single crochets and we need to move the single, uh, the stitch marker to the first one of the two. So not this one but the first one. Okay, so let's move that right stitch marker up into, into position. Okay, and now let's do the other side. This is where the other stitch marker is. Two single crochets here. And this one is going, the stitch marker is gonna be moved to the one right underneath the loop on this one. So we're moving the other one back. And so now all you have to just do, continue to blaze along and just single crochet the remainder of this row to complete off round number five. So we're coming back to the end of row number five all the way and we get that last one and let's turn our work and start row number six. So we chain up one, single crochet and single crochet yourself all the way to the first stitch marker and then we'll start the next process for going around. Okay, coming up all the way around looking for the stitch markers before I begin and I have the next one is my stitch marker. So what we're going to do is the next stitches all the way from between each point is gonna get two single crochets each. So one and two but wait before you do any further I want you to move the stitch marker now to the first one here. Okay, so not the one directly underneath the, the first one of the two that you started and that will represent the next row. So you can see it's following that shape that I had in the original uh, when I flashed it to you. So the next one is going to be two single crochets in, in there and the next one is gonna be two single crochets and the next one which is your stitch marker is going to be two single crochets and I want you to move the stitch marker for this side right up underneath this loop which is your second one right there. So let's uh, continue along. This is uh, row number six. Just continue to blaze along and just single crochet into the remaining going all the way back to the top of the stocking. Okay, finishing up row number six and just coming back to the end. Last one, turn our work. Let's chain up one and begin single crochet again. This is for row number seven and please single crochet all the way back until you hit that stitch marker once again. Okay, coming all the way back up to the stitch marker again and this is for row number seven. 
and I wanna get to that spot first. So once we get to the stitch marker, I want you to put in two single crochets again and let's move that stitch marker up ready and ready for the next one and we wanna move it to the second one and so one right underneath this loop here. So let's move that stitch marker up right now. When I did this uh, last night, I actually was moving it afterward and it's easier to do it as you go. So the next remaining six single crochets are just gonna be one single crochet each. So one, two, three, four, four, five, and six. Look at that. So I could have told you just to meet me at the next stitch marker but I wanna prove to you that the counts still work out. Once you get to the next stitch marker, I want you to put in two single crochets again and we need to move that stitch marker up one more time. Just checking my notes off camera here and it is gonna be to the first one of the, or sorry, the second one of the two. So it's not the first one right under the loop, it's the second one over for this one and then continue to blaze along as you just single crochet the remainder of row number seven. Okay, so we're just finishing up row number seven, coming all the way back. Okay, let's turn our work. We're at the top of the stocking again. Chain one and then single crochet ourselves all the way back till we get to the stitch marker once again for row number eight. Okay, for row number eight, I'm gonna be changing the game plan because in the next row, we're gonna start doing half double crochets. So I've got two left before I'm to the stitch marker here. I wanna get the ones finish first. So here's the thing. I'm not at the stitch marker yet but I need you to move this stitch marker to this one that here before we even started that. Okay, so we're just into the one before the stitch marker. So now that we're at the stitch marker, here's what we're going to do. So this one is kind of a little unusual. So it's gonna be two single crochets into the one with the stitch marker and then the next two single crochets are gonna be by themselves. Okay, the next two single crochet spots are going to be two single crochets in each. Like so. And then the next one is going to be two single crochets by themselves or one crochet by themselves in two spots. We're back at the stitch marker and this is gonna be two single crochets into the same spot and I want you to single crochet into the next one by itself and that's where I want you to put that stitch marker in for that row for row number nine as we're coming all the way around. In row number nine, we're gonna start actually counting our stitches as we come and then basically just blaze along for completing row number eight with one single crochet all the way back to the top of the stocking. So we just changed up the game plan a little bit for this one here. I'm finishing up row number eight just like so. In number nine, we're gonna start counting stitches. So let's turn our work and we're gonna chain up one. So for round number nine or round, row number nine, we're going to be single crocheting into the first 27 only. So let's begin to do that. So we, I'm gonna count this live with you. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. So as per the instructions, the next 10 stitches are going to be half double crochets each. So let's begin to do that. So we're gonna count those out live as well. So we're just gonna wrap going in, pulling it through and then pull through three. We're gonna do that 10 times. So it was one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Look at that. So now I have, see this stitch marker? That's exactly where <laughs> that should be. So it's a great uh, concept. Let's begin and I'm gonna show you how to wrap around the top of this now. 
So let's begin. We're gonna be starting to do the increases but with half double crochet this time. The, the one with the stitch marker at this point we're just going to just go in and put in two half double crochets and I'm not gonna move the stitch marker any further in this project because we're almost done. The next two stitches are gonna be one half double crochet each and the next one is gonna be a double. So there'll be two half doubles into that one. So now what we have is that we have a total of six half doubles that are by themselves. So let's count those out. So one and then two, three, four, five and six and now the next one is gonna be two half doubles in there. One and two. Pays to do my homework doesn't it? The next two are empty. So it's the next two are just one half doubles by themselves. Look where the stitch marker is. So we know we're still in balance. So we have one and then two and right where that stitch marker which is where it should be there should be two half doubles into that same spot and we're gonna leave that stitch marker right where it is. So let's come down the other side and we're just gonna just continue to do what we did on the other side. So there's gonna be ten by themselves. So we have one and they're half doubles. Two, three, four, we have five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Just like that. So what we're going to do then, you don't have to count all the way back to the end because you know the counts are right. So you're just gonna have to single crochet yourself all the way back down and this will complete off row number nine. Let's finish up row number nine together just like so and we're ready for row number ten. Row number ten is again a one that we're gonna have to count as well. So let's uh, begin. We're just going to, we've turned our work. We're going to chain up one and we need to put in one single crochet into the next thirty. So this is one and I'm gonna count it two, three and I'm gonna speed up as well. It was three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, 27, 28, 29 and 30. So at this point we're gonna start doing the toes of the paws and I'll be right back. So let's begin to do the toes of this and what we need to do, we need to do four toes of course. So we're gonna skip three stitches, one, two and three and we're going to do a treble crochet for seven times into the fourth one. So to do a treble we're gonna wrap and wrap and we go into that fourth stitch and then just pull through two, two and two and we do that with a total of seven times. So I kinda just rowboat my bang, row row or, go, or when you do it like when you count it you can actually just do one, two and then in. However it is for you to remember. Okay well you wanna do a total of seven of these. Okay so we got five so far and this is gonna be six and seven. So that was toe number one. So we're gonna come back down and we're gonna skip over the three. One, two, three, go to the fourth for a single crochet. Let's do toe number two. So we're just gonna wrap and wrap and we're gonna count over one, two, three, go to the fourth and you're going to do seven trebles once again. Row, row. Okay. It's also called yarn over just in case anybody wants to be technical about it. Some people really don't like that treble. So we have six so far. We have seven and again skipping over one, two, three. Go to the fourth right here. You're pretty well near the center point. You can see that. Now we're gonna skip over four and row, row. Go to the skip over to the fourth and begin another treble which is the third toe. The next row is gonna be really simple. I'm gonna show you a cheating technique instead of having to count all the way down the line too. 
Okay, and I think we got five so far. Five, this is six and seven. Again, we're skipping over three, one, two, three, go to the fourth for a single crochet, and we have to do the final toe. So you can see the toes are starting to come out just like so. So let's do the final one. So we're gonna row, row, and one, two, three, go to the fourth. Also known as yarning over. Okay, and we're doing treble, this is called treble crochet, just in case you, I, you didn't pick up on that. I used to, uh, one time used to think it was triple crochet and uh, it wasn't because I thought treble was more of a uh, European uh, kind of a UK term but turns out it's a real North American one as well. And it's the next level up from double. So one, two, three, we have six. Here's seven. Okay, so we're gonna skip over one, two, three, go to the fourth and all you're just going to do at this point is just single crochet yourself back to the end of the row which is the top of the stocking and your toes are in and you have one more row to go and then the actual stocking uh, front side is actually complete. So I'm just completing off row number 10. I'm back at the top of the stocking and this is the final row as we go around. Let's turn our work. We have our paws in at the bottom and now here is the cheating technique. You can either count it but why bother. Chain one and single crochet and single crochet until you get to the first toe. Don't start the first toe, just wait for me and then I'll show you what to do next because there's a cheating technique instead of having to count all the way across. Okay, so here's the cheating technique. Here is the first toe of four and basically I want to single crochet until I get to that toe. Now we decided that there were seven of these trebles, right? So the very beginning, the very middle of the three, so you're gonna pull the two sides, so pull one and two three and four and look you have three right in the center. Those are the three that are gonna get two uh, single crochets into each one. Okay, so you, the middle one of the set, the middle three of the seven are the ones that get two double crochets into each. Make sense, right? So why count it when you can see it? It's awesome. Okay, so we're now we're just going to single crochet ourselves back down just on top of the other stitches, one and two. There's actually should be a total of five. That was two, three, and four, and five. So you can still see I'm following the pattern, but it's just a way to cheat the system. Now you're back at the next toe. So the, the first two on the side, first two and knit. There's the middle three, and my counting of five equaled out, and the middle three get two singles into each. Just like so. So then you can count it uh, down again. So one, two, three, four, and five. And look at that. I should be at the middle of the three. So if I was off by one count of uh, there, you would be able to tell. So the middle three are going to get two uh, singles into each. Just like so. And then you can count it down again. So one and two. Three, four, and five. And look at that. I'm back at the next center. So the next three are going to get two singles into each. So once you get those uh, two singles into each, then basically the rest of it all the way to the end of the line is just one single crochet and you're going to fasten off. And you need to do two of these in order to have a front and the back for this. But you only need to do the pause on the first side that is visible when you're looking at it. So continue to do that. Please fasten off and we're gonna start doing the paw prints next. Okay, so I've got all the way done. The first side is done. I gotta do a second side to have a duplicate and you can see the paws are right at the bottom here and the paw prints are gonna sit right inside the paws itself and then the main paw um, padding is gonna be right in the middle just like so. And so you can see it has a different look on either side. So you have to choose what side you like best. I almost like it like this on the right side facing up and I can tell, how can I tell that's the right side if you're wondering? See how it bowls up toward me? That means that's the right side. If it's bowling down the other way away from you then that means it's the wrong side. So that's a personal call that you can make for yourself. There is instructions on what you should do anyway. So let's begin. We're gonna start doing the middle paw print next. 
Okay, let's begin. We're gonna start on the center paw and I just did this off camera just to kind of test myself and this is what it's gonna look like at the end. You wanna make sure you leave an extra long tail so that you can sew this onto the stocking. When you go to sew it on, make sure you don't sew it <laughs> through both panels. I would recommend sewing this on prior to putting the two panels together anyway. So this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna see that there's an indentation right here and that just makes it look like more realistic when you go to put it on and remember when you go to put this on you might wanna put it so that it's the wrong side facing you because it'll bulge out a little bit and then you can see the indentation is heading down toward the toes as well. So it's up to you. It's your creativity. You can do what you want. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna start off with the slip knot and I'm just gonna grab my yarn just like so and we are going to chain six. So we're not doing a complete revolution just so that you're aware right off the bat. So we're gonna chain six. Remember that this doesn't ever count as one. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And what we want to do is then we wanna work our way around it just like we did. So we're gonna come down one side and go down the other. We're gonna do that right next. So to begin we're gonna go second chain from the hook and just turn it around get that back hump. So go one, two, just turn around get that back hump. It's just easier. So you're gonna get that one as per the instructions and then it says into the next three chains that are available. So one, two and 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 three and we wanna come into that very final stitch just right there and what we wanted to do is just put in three single crochets going all the way around. So let's do that. So we're just gonna come in into the final. So we have one, we have two and three. See how I'm just naturally turning it so now it's kind of upside down and so let's begin the other side and it says working on the opposite side of the chain single crochet into the next three so that we're on the other side. So one, two and three and it says a single, a two single crochets into the last chain which is right there. So one and two and we're not gonna join this. We're just gonna continue to work in a continuous uh, revolution. Let's begin round number two. Let's begin round number two and it says to increase in the first stitch. So we're gonna come right to the first one here and that means that there's gonna be two single crochets into that one just like the other pattern. So they increase with two single crochets and then it says single crochet into the next three. So we're just gonna go one, two, and three. And now it says to increase three times. So the next three are gonna be and you see how it's coming around the corner or it's gonna be two into each one and then this is the middle one. This is gonna be two and there's gonna be two in there as well and three. And three just like so and then it says a single crochet into the next three. So one, two, and three and it says to increase twice and that's the remi remainder of two stitches. So we have one and two into the next one and then the next one is your final. So it's one and two. And now we're ready for round number three. So that's how it looks so far. So round number three I'm gonna take my time. The first one we have single crochet so let's just continue. The first one single crochet followed by a half double into the same one. We're doing that paw kind of shape. The next stitch is going to be a half double and then there will be a double into the same one, a double crochet into the same one. The next one is going to be two double crochets. So one and two into the same one and then the next one is a slip stitch down here. So we're just gonna go in, pull through and pull through. That's what creates that little uh, indentation and so we're just gonna repeat what we just did here but on the other side but we're gonna go in the middle direction first. So we're going to start off with two double crochets. So one and two into the next one. Okay the next one is a double crochet followed by a half double crochet into the same one. See how I'm kind of decreasing the stitches. The next one's half double crochet followed by a single crochet into the same one. So we're gonna start going then all the way around. So what we have to do then is this all the remainder 11 stitches that we going all the way around is just going to be one single crochet. So we just start off and you can either count it or just make sure you get back to the where you started. So we've got one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, and look at that, ten and eleven. And we're back to where we should be. So you have your indentation in now. And now I want you to leave an extra long tail. We're gonna use that to sew it onto the project. So extra long tail. I've got it off to the side here. And I'm just gonna pull the yarn through and prepare that to be sewn onto the actual stocking. And that's what it looks like at this point. Okay, let's be making some toes at this point. Just little round circles and you're gonna need enough to leave on so you can sew it on afterward. So let's begin. It's only two rounds. Very easy. We're just going to start off with a slip knot. Insert your hook and I want you to chain two. So one and two. Now you're gonna come to the very beginning chain and you're just going to simply insert the hook and single crochet into that spot three or six times. So that was two, three, Look how it's naturally turning around. Four, five, and six. You're not going to join with the slip stitch. You're immediately gonna come into the first one and then every stitch is going to get two in there. And if there's six, that means that there's a total of 12 stitches. So what I just do, insert the hook, pull through, and go one and one. It's in the same one. It just helps you keep count. Go into the next one and go two and two. There's two singles in that one. And the third one is three and three. And the next one is four and four. And then five and five or five and five and six and six. So that's it. So all you're just going to do then is just insert your hook into the next one and just pull through and through to create a slip stitch. Leave on an extra long tail so that you can sew on that onto your panel. Just like so and just pull through the yarn through the loop and that's good to go and you just have to trim off the end the one that's on the back. And so you have to make four toes and that's how you do it. So before I attach my panels together, I'm going to sew on my toes and look at the photograph that's provided in the pattern just to give you an indication of where they should go. And what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna turn my toes upside down. How do I know that's upside down? Remember when I just said in, in the tutorial, if it, it's falling out towards up, it's like this is the good side and if it's going facing downward, you see how the edges are going down, that's the wrong side and you can see it looks completely different. For myself, I'm gonna put the the good side facing down because it will bulge up just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just in, grab my darning needle and using the photograph to position it, I want to put this onto the stocking prior to putting the edges together. So just insert that in. And so I'm just going to eye it up and just kind of just start off on an edge. I want the edging to be really perfect. So I want to start off on the edge side first and then just go straight down through the project. And this is gonna be the inside of the stocking anyway so you'll never see it like so. And then just come up again the other side, come up through somewhere just making sure you're grabbing it like so. And just continue to sew these on all the way around like this. So you can squeeze it, you can shape it if you really wanted to. The creativity is really up to you on what you want to do with this particular idea. You can see I'm not burning any brain cells doing this. Actually I don't mind sewing. That's the kind of funny thing. A lot of people hate the sewing element. I don't mind it. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I missed the memo that it's supposed to be terrible but I actually like the, ther uh, the therapy of it. So I'm just coming through the back. It helps that my darning needle is nice and sharp by the way as well. Okay, so I just wanna kinda eye it up. You can adjust it too so if you wanted to make it more oblong you can just grab this section on the top and just kinda go over a little further over and when you do that it'll pull it over as well. Kind of a useless but interesting tip. <laughs> and we're gonna go all the way around and I'll show you how I'm gonna fasten off because we're using the same color you really don't see it either. So I'm just coming all the way. I've almost got most of all the way around. Coming down. 
and I would just want to test it. So I got a little section. You see how it's lifting? So I, I'm not quite done yet. And now I'm done. So I'm gonna fasten off on the on the inside of the stocking. So I'm just gonna slide this under a few fibers toward the center because you'll never see it on the other side like so. And then I wanna slide it through two more times to in different directions like so. It's impossible to get out if it's going in three different directions. I'm just gonna put it through one more time just because I can. So I'm gonna just uh, fasten that off at this point. Just clip it off. Don't leave any extra. You don't need to. And that will have your paw print just like so. So now you just have to do four more and then you have to position that one right in the middle for the paw. Okay the next part of this tutorial is I'm gonna show you how to work the dog bone and I'm gonna show you the components here because the dog bone consists of five components. It has the middle section of the bone here and then there are four of these round circles that strategically just go over the edge halfway. The other one is up on the other side and then obviously the other uh, two are on this side here. And it's when you sew it onto your actual project that it gives it the bone impression. So that, that's not really hard is it? Make sure you leave on extra strings so that you can when you fasten off so that you can sew it onto your project. So let's begin the middle section of doing the bone. Let's begin to do the first one. We're gonna start off with the slip knot. And this is the center bone area. I'm just using a different color so that you can clearly see it on camera. So what we want to do is chain 15. So let's begin the first section here of the bone. We're gonna start off with a slip knot and I want you to chain 15. Remember that the one on the hook right now does not count as one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Second chain from the hook, just come around, turn it around, get that back one and then just single crochet yourself all the way across. This is row number one. So this uh, bone right in the middle only is seven rows and it's all it is it's single crochet back and forth. That's how easy it is. So just continue just to single crochet across the chain. I'll meet you in just a moment. When you get all the way across to the chain you get that last one. So this is row number one of seven. Turn the work, chain one and then just begin to single crochet. And please do this for seven rows then fasten off. All this is is just a rectangular all done with single crochet. So that's how you do the middle section of the bone. I think it's very self explanatory at this point. So continue to do that and then you can finish that off and then I'll show you how to do the ends of the bones which are the round circles next. Let's begin to do the round sections of the bone. You'll need to do four of these. So we're just gonna start off with the slip knot. And we're going to do this very much like the paw prints but there's three rounds instead of two. So this time it's chaining of two, one and two and then six single crochets into the beginning chain. So we have one, two, three, four, five and six. We don't want to do anything with this slip uh, slip stitch or anything. We just want to continue to the next one and the next round. So round number two every one of them is going to get two single crochets. So this is how I do it. It's just like the paw print is that here's the first one. So I go one and one. There's two in that first one and then I go two and, and two. So there's two in that one and three and three and we have four and four five, whoops, not doing really well on this one. There's five and five and then this is the final of six and six. So that's how I keep count easily. So what we're going to do then for the next one, this is round number three. This is the final. We're gonna start off with the chaining of one first and we're going to start off with single crochet into the next one and then the next one is going to be an increase and we have to do that six times. So what I go is one and one. So then the next one is by itself and then this one will be two and two, two single crochets. The next one's by itself and then I go three and three. It's just the way I count it. Next one's by itself and it's four and four. Next one's by itself and then we have five 
and five and the next one's by itself and then we have six and six and that took us all the way back around and when we look at it that's exactly what we needed to do and then all you just do is just in the next stitch just pull through and through for the slip stitch leave on an extra long tail and then that's the sections of your bone and then sew them onto your project accordingly. So I'm going to leave the next section to you. I'm doing both cats and dogs at the same time and essentially you have to put your pieces together as you see here and then just sew it along the edge so that both of the panels are together. Around the top of it all you just need to do is just single crochet evenly around the top with the same color that you have and then for the loop all you just need to do is that you need to right at the very back you're going to chain 10 and then basically you'll have a beautiful loop on the very back of the project that will sit up quite nicely for you. So just uh, refer to the instructions for the border and the hanging loop in order to make that work. And until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of redheart.com.